Hey there, welcome to the Ryan Kingsline Show. My name's Ryan Kingsline, and in this podcast, we interview amazing artists, creatives, and creators to find out how they tick and how they got where they are today. So sit back, relax. I look forward to sharing their journey with you. All right, Samuel, thanks for joining me, or Sam, I should say. Yeah, yeah, sounds fine, yeah. Great. Thanks, man. I really appreciate this. I have been a huge fan of your work for a while. I just, the way you sculpt skin is, there's, it's just beautiful. Oh, thanks. So why don't you, uh, we start with this, just giving us a sense of like, what do you do today? What's the day job? What's like? Uh, currently, I just start a new job. I just moved from uh, New Zealand last two months ago. Yeah. And um, I just moved to a new job two weeks ago. In like a small city in Montreal uh, mm-hmm. called Folks, and pretty much like in a generalist kind of modeling, texturing, look dev position. So that's pretty much it for the like the physical uh, aspect of it. Um, just moved back from uh, I was at Weta for two years for before that I was in Montreal working at a frame store. And what is it that your specialty is? Because I mean I know you can sculpt like the devil, um, here, but what is it that you do in the job? Normally, and. For job, I mostly do texturing and modeling and look dev. I mean, and like if I have to put a title on it, I was mostly texture artists and modelers and, um, for jobs in general. Got it. You know, and I guess that's kind of the thing that is really kind of amazing to me about your career is that whole phrase, if you had to put a, um, a label on it. <laughs> Cause you uh, quite a few, you're, you're, you're much more than just any one of those jobs. Well, originally I was in philosophy and like theology and school. Mm-hmm. So I kind of ended up, well, just practicing sculpting and exploring like digital content creation on the side. And I haven't found really my spot yet. I'm just, I'm still exploring, I guess, that medium. So it's hard to put like a, a words or a title or something on, on what I'm trying to do really. I certainly have different interests in general mm-hmm. which the visual part and the digital content one is one but yeah i have some i still have trouble figuring out what what i can say about what i'm doing or something so it definitely these days i'm more interested in to vr and ar in terms of uh, tools to do digital content yeah i don't know I, it's just really um i have really trouble putting a title on on my physical body or physical thing uh, so i don't know yeah. It's more like a social thing. It's more, uh, it's not up to me really to define that. Mm-hmm. How'd you get started? How'd you shift from philosophy and all that? I don't think really I shift. I guess I always like see those two things at two different, but still connected feel. I mean, mm-hmm. if you do any visual thing without the connection to a more conceptual aspect, I feel like, I mean, both are deeply connected they're just too fractal they're just too facet of a different like geometry really so i, I still be like, more interested in general about the, the, the conceptual aspect and the more the, the cerebral side but uh mm-hmm. yeah i mean i just i kind of started for fun i guess i i was always attracted a bit by the um kind of the etherical aspect of digital creation i mean yeah. i did classical school in clay and, and painting and all that. But I always had a, something I was an attraction towards the, uh, even if it's, it seemed not physical, there's something really strange and mysterious about doing digital content. I think we just see the, the tip of the iceberg of where that thing will emerge eventually. But I don't know. I, I guess I was attracted by some unknown force about that. And that mixed with the, I, I just started in high school mostly and just, get trying Maya and just starting playing with ZBrush and Mudbox, really. Mm. And I guess that's how it started. Just simple exploration with software, I guess. Yeah. I imagine you pretty much self-taught yourself if you started in high school. It wasn't, yeah. I can't imagine a lot of teachers doing that. Yeah, no, I really, I come from like a super Nordic region of Canada. There was mm-hmm. no school or anything, really. Uh, I just taught digital teacher mostly and just going on forums when there was forums on the internet, now it's pretty much kind of gone now. But mm-hmm. yeah, mostly self taught I guess, at least for that. I mean, I haven't been to school for uh, any school thing or anything, really. And I haven't met any, like, until I got my first job, like, I was, like, a physical when I was, like, 20, 
22, I think. And I think that's the first time I met someone doing CG. I mean, the, the first eight year was just alone, just practicing for fun on the side, really. It was, yeah, I never met it before anyone practicing it. But um, yeah. What was the first job? Uh, it was a small studio in Montreal, really simple, like a journalist position. I stayed there for a year. I mean, it was kind of okay. I mean, for a first experience, really, you learn a lot. I mean, the thing though is that when you're kind of learning it on the side, there's a lot of like technical thing that you don't really learn, mostly mm -hmm. about pipeline related, doing clean stuff and you know, all, doing just a proper management of your scene and all that. So it's something you, I guess I learned the uh, hard way <laughs> there at my, at my first job. Got it. So anatomy, I want to talk a little bit yeah. about anatomy with you because anatomy. There's, yeah. yeah, there's such a grasp of anatomy, but you play with anatomy. I don't know. I guess I'm blind to my style, I guess. For me, I would not say play with it. I say I'll try to do something as as tight as possible or as tight as I perceive it. But um, yeah. I guess you could say yeah, I play with it. You know? yeah. Well, like if we take a look at your um, your guy here, the human. This is four years ago I'm looking at. And yeah, I mean, there's some... Oh, uh, that's funny. probably like, there's... way older than that. Uh, so like older than four? Years ago. Oh, yeah, it's like 10 years ago. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, so you've got like let's take a look at your hand. I mean, the, this hand that you did for, in VR is just like amazing, and I can see so much wonderful form in here. But how do you approach studying anatomy? Let's start there. I guess it's more about a feeling, really. Um, it's hard to put like a really A B C technique or like a really linear process about how I perceive anatomy of something. Mm -hmm. I guess it's. I guess definitely gathering reference from multiple stuff like real drawing, sculpture, whatever, you know, it's it's always good to have a good library, well managed of different things that inspire you in terms of shape offline and, and all that. But mm -hmm. and it's just like putting it on walls and just getting surrounded by those reference and having a nice way to manage that is always a good uh, starting point, I guess. And the rest is just... I don't know. It's, 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 I, I see it more as like the internal way. And in, inside, I mean, it's more about figuring out what type of emotion you want to convey with the form in space more than just trying to replicate something. So it's more about capturing the inner flow of the, the shape and space. Mm -hmm. So I'm more, yeah, attracted to, to that as a starting point more than uh, just copying something. It's more about the, yeah, ultimately, it's more about what I want to say, really, because the technical side of it is certainly something that you learn in the first few years. But ultimately, once I guess you, you achieve a certain level that you can technically do whatever you have in mind, it's more about the, the, like the transcending aspect of it, which is what you want to convey, what you want to express. Or, so I guess it, yeah, anatomy is just like uh, at the bridge toward the end goal that is like communicate a feeling or an emotion or obsession about, about something, really. Yeah. So how do you get your these ideas? These um like if we're looking at this medium sketch here where there's the female and the dude. Yeah. Well it's I guess it's ideas kinda emerge from just life itself. I guess it's reading, just questioning and just going through life. You have those inner flow emerging and from that emerge a certain feeling, a certain emotion that you wanna you don't really understand those really. It's more about you have like you feel that there is a mystery or there's something there and you just want to orbit around it without even figuring out what it is really. But so it's, I don't know, it comes from multiple different perspectives. It just comes from being alive. I guess you, you get those things you want to, it's, it's not really a thing really. It's more like, yeah, you just have inner structure or inner pattern that you want to convey into a visual visual form and you even if you're you're kind of blind to it in some way where you're just like the medium that the well the human it seemed like the human uh, form is just the medium to express to express that thing that you're not even aware of in some way so you're partially aware of it but i guess ultimately you're just like uh, you're blind to it so yeah it's, i don't know if i really answered the question really i'm kind of vague sometimes about those those things but uh yeah, no, that's fair enough. It's all part of the the process. But mostly what I look for with, in these conversations is just how people approach the vocabulary of it. Yeah. But along these lines, like um, one of the problems that I have myself is when you have these ideas, sometimes getting them into CG can, you know, this is, 
it's not like drawing and you just kind of sketch out the idea you know that takes a lot of time to develop and there's the technical aspects and you know like if i had an idea i couldn't just jump into oculus and do anything just yet because medium's still a little new to me yeah but how what do you do to kind of maintain the momentum or to help you be able to transfer those ideas into reality i guess i just and time and I'm just not really in a rush really to finish anything. It's not like mm-hmm. I don't want to get a, a job or something. I don't want to do a demo reel or I'm not really into that, uh, that cultural aesthetic of doing that. So I guess I just start off by plugging stuff in medium and just playing with balance and just or bidding around with super low res blocking shape and just trying to first. Well, well I think I, I spend 90% of it in like a super low frequency form and just like. Mm-hmm first degree form and just trying to see what seemed balanced and what seemed like trying to put iconography and just figuring out what you want to convey and what's the best physical virtual form to express it. So I guess I, I just orbit around for a while until I kind of find a, well, yeah, I just find the, what seemed to be the reasonable way to be. Is it fair to say that it's not really that you're focused on the idea or the result. It's it's really just about getting in and work in the process and doing things and and more in uh, the moment. Well, there's certainly the moment, the first draft about maybe a composition or an idea about like a, a symbol that you want to physically or virtually put in, in your piece, you know, but mm-hmm. you don't know all that inner emotion will actually materialize in, in, in space, you know? So it's more about sticking to that inner core that is not really in shape or in form, just trying to orbit around it and put matter around that emotion or that inner feeling that you want to convey. So it just so sort of sometimes just trying to be in the, the inner perspective or like if you do a human figure, just trying to be inside this culture and just trying to feel what it is to be there and just to, to get into the mood of the, of the piece that you want to that you want to do or you, the thing you want to express really absolutely so, what do you recommend for people to get better at anatomy and being able to create the human form in a dynamic way as i said it's like mostly getting good reference is always the key like there's no way around it i mean gathering as much as possible different type of body shape and figuring out how skin react and how fat react to different type of torsion and different movement. That's one thing. And I feel like I'm not really the, the most anatomic guy. I mean, I do know a bit of anatomy, but uh, I feel like most of my knowledge seem more into the, more about balancing outline more than actually knowing all the muscle and all the tendon. It's something that you definitely learn over the years about where the muscle and all the, like the tendons are in connection and different type of tension you can create with it. But I feel like most of, I don't know if, but I feel most of my knowledge more about I know when an outline is wrong, so I, I kind of feel like I, I can balance it out, even if sometimes I, I don't have a clue about what's actually all the intricate inner muscle that are actually acting to create the shape. But I know that I have kind of vague intuition about what's the outline of it. So I don't know. It's like I, I don't feel like I know anatomy. It's just a strange phenomenon. Even if at the end it kind of looks like anatomy, mm-hmm. I feel like most of it is just about just for turning around it, looking at the outline and seeing, looking at the flow. And if the, you, some, you feel that the outline is, well, the, the sculpture is all about looking at the outline. So you just like a different, super strange angle until you find an angle that doesn't seem right. You don't know why, but you know, it's not right. And you just try to polish it and just refine it until you get, well, you, at, at the end, you get still anatomy, but I guess it's more driven by, the aesthetic of the outline, I guess, more than anything else, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's fascinating because that's one of the things I was experiencing is, is it's not like um, the anatomy is awesome. It's great. But there's just such a, um, a fluid feel to it. And I know a lot of times people can get really locked into anatomy and you can get into the study and it makes things tighter. Yeah. But yours is not tighter. Yours is actually very fluid. Yeah. Well, I'm not really a muscle guy. I'm not especially fan of muscle in general. Mm-hmm. It's not something like the emotion that the muscle kind of convey in general. It's not really an aesthetic that I'm really attracted to. Even if mm-hmm. you a beautiful shape that seemed to imply some muscle definition under it is kind of interesting. Ultimately, I'm not some, someone that I'm more interested in too fat and skin or in muscle, actually, or the a bone muscly kind of thing. But I'm more interested. Yeah. So I'm not really... In, 
and to muscle too much, or at least not into defining muscle too much. Yeah, that makes sense. How was that VR exhibit? I think you guys did a... Uh... That was pretty f- amazing, actually. We're supposed to do another one. I mean, I just got back from New Zealand, so we kind of plan to do another one because that's definitely, well, it's definitely something that I'm super hyped about in general. I feel like I was never really part of the CG community or I was never really felt at home with all the CG sphere that is really oriented to get a job, which is fine. But it was never like, I feel like ultimately the digital create and, uh, creation content will take all this maturity and all this credibility in the VR space and the AR space over the like the next years and stuff. Stuff. So it's it's cool to explore ultimately having a gallery or having virtual space will which will be pretty much like a website. But now, I mean, it just make more sense for people that do actually 3D content to actually expose your work in a 3D space that you perceive volume straight. I mean, it's kind of strange in a way that we actually do mod boxes, zebra stuff, and we flat it out the result to put it on a 2D scrollable interface, which is. I mean, we're killing most of the poetic aspect of sculpture, really. Even if we we light it well, at the end, it's it's something that has to be experienced from a like a stereo perspective or like a human perspective, and that's why VR is so it's super inspiring. Even if it's still low, like super low res, the headset, and but the potential is just, especially AR and VR, it's just it will get there to a point that uh, I guess like all the 2D software or well, like Mudbox and ZBrush will have to migrate to VR content because it's. It's more natural. It's more organic. And that's, uh, that's where it has to evolve. I think it's just pretty interesting to actually, because there's so much, the social aspect of VR is really like just thinking about doing, let's say ZBrush and multiplayer is just, it's not even a question that you could ask. You know, you, there's no way to have multiple like cursor in the screen, mm-hmm. but like in, in medium, you want to actually, the more you go in the machine, the more you want to connect with people and. That's why it's so cool. Like you just gather communities and start doing actually like collective space that the artists manage and they can create experience and work and just like even abstract experience for like anyone to actually explore is, well, to me, it sounds like a pretty fucking rad idea just to explore with that. I mean, yeah. it's still like, it's still really the beginning, but um, I feel like everyone, like all that, those guys, like, that we're at that, that night event. I, I think we're all blown away by how I think we we're kind of the first, first one to do it. I mean, I haven't seen anyone sculpting in VR, exposing in VR. And I, f- I feel like everyone was kind of blown away by, man, this is well in a few years that that will be a thing. There's no way around it. I'm, it's definitely something I have in mind to do more and just, especially for just in terms of just gathering and just centralizing different mind i feel like vr space is is an amazing spot for that even for teaching later on and just a way as to, for a teacher to actually have the physical even if it's not i mean at the end physical is a bit rele- irrelevant but the fact that you feel that like the soul of someone uh, in some way you feel like the soul of someone in front of you and have that the, 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 the physicality aspect emerge from that but being super far away i mean the potential of it is just that could totally change the planet. I mean, there's a fact that all the, you know, like right now, most of the human like kind of migrate to cities, you know, for doing it. Mm-hmm. Most of it, most of the job now, it's mostly going abs- like it's, you don't need a physical body. You are just actually selling your mind for uh, most of the job. Now it's not physical. There's still some physical job, but most of it is mostly in front of computer or something that could be remote, you know? And I feel like VR could be the last and AR could be the last push to actually give us the power to go back to maybe the countryside and live in a less expensive place, but still be connected to the whole community of, of the metaverse or the planet. You know? Yeah. Have you seen the, uh, the recent Facebook avatar? Which one? It's on, those on the screen right now. Yeah. This, I just saw this yesterday. Why yeah, yeah. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So this is kind of going along the lines of what, like the VR gallery, you're actually in the gallery. You've got an avatar of your face yeah. and it looks yeah. dead on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that could be your avatar. It could be anything else, really. Uh, no, I think it's just a matter of getting one device that will do it mainstream. My, my feel is really that once Apple actually start doing AR glasses, people will actually realize the potential of VR and or AR mostly. And mm-hmm. then slowly will. I mean, I feel like the Internet was kind of the 
the web that actually spread a 2D interface across the whole planet. And AR and VR will actually give the Z, the Z value to the internet in some way. So mm-hmm. we'll probably have sculpture and public park and then just in cities like billboard and just have permanent or temporary artists exposing a different street corner virtual. But at the end, it's at one point, I feel like in, like, let's say in 50 years, I guess if you had, you were to put a device on your head, you would probably not be in a position to actually say which object is real or not, ultimately, at least visually. So once we get there, I mean, the notion of actually doing 2D content will be just part of, as part of reality as like heating or something. And that, will, I guess we'll be in a good spot to actually create some cool stuff with that. Sculpture is one thing, but having animated sculpture that emerge in some sort of polar portal that have an audio like super uh, psychedelic trip or something. I don't know. You could do whatever, you know, you're not limited by any physical or uh, monetary costs mostly. So yeah, it's, uh, I'm pretty hype about that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And yeah. you guys, you guys just had default avatars in here and what you're just walking around inside of this Oculus home environment. Somebody put together. Yeah. 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 No, I, I did the layout of this one. That was like the default one. Yeah. And I kind of did the, the like more official uh, gallery setup but yeah. uh yeah that was the preset i think it's the one that those avatars is the one that ironically is the one that geo did that geo was in the gallery and clint wow. what is the guy that is working on oculus for the um, for setting the oculus home stuff so he was at the, the event too so it was pretty cool too yeah that was just basic avatar from uh from the stuff but ultimately the best one would be that you can import your own once the setup is getting more mainstream and more refined, you could mm-hmm. totally import your own own costume, your own avatar, and have your own blend shape and all emotion and all that. And ultimately, the market space for that could be quite amazing. You could just sell, actually, avatar, sell uh, props for, I don't know, 50 cent to anyone on the planet that they can put on their desk virtually. But that thing will be permanent because everyone could kind of have it. Ultimately, it's going to be like some sort of contact lenses or... Like implant ultimately, like in maybe uh, seventy years or so. Mm, I love that but, because isn't that like that's how game companies survive and make billions is uh, yeah. skins, right? So well, skins. I feel like yeah. I mean, mm, ultimately, I totally see a future that n- now CG is really lim- it's kind of connected to the the game industry and the film industry, mm-hmm. but ultimately yeah. that could evolve to a point that artists can actually just sell asset not for the sake of doing it in a game or in a film or something related to another industry but just for the sake of actually sharing um beautiful aesthetic personal stuff you know for people at home you know you can do it with 3d printing but with the digital form there's something interesting about well that you can send it anywhere on the earth different size it doesn't cost much you know so you could sell it for i don't know one box you know but shared for a bunch of people you know it's, that's interesting at least for the emergence of like interesting artists work that could be a good model for creating a, a a bunch of like bubble of artists just selling their work for the sake of doing beautiful stuff and not being connected to uh, a game or a film or whatever yeah it's pretty awesome i love I, I was really excited i definitely think you guys were easily the first to do this and it's such a great group i mean you got geo in there mariano yeah it's just pretty awesome yeah no that was a really cool experience definitely i mean we need to do another one uh, i think now we can import our own uh i mean uh, ultimately the best would be to do it in unreal but the fact that it's so mainstream with the uh oculus home uh, we kind of just end up using that but the fact that with Unreal, having a bit more control over the lighting the fog and all the environment have more custom animation and just having a beautiful, super trippy gallery with uh, like permanent room and like just like monthly artists exposing their work in, in different rooms. Just the, the potential is huge, really. But it's a slow process. I mean, not everyone is up up to date with like VR set, and the, the VR set is really limited right now. I feel like resolution is really a killer for 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 everyone. So I guess we'll have to wait for Gen two to really appreciate like the grandeur of the the phenomenon. Have you been exploring AR? Yeah, I guess AR side of it. Because like a friend of my wife's has a, um, it's kind of an AR theme park type thing in San Francisco. Really? 
where you go in and you put the glasses on and you go to different areas and they're using HoloLens, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So she's got mixed yeah. mixed reality and yeah. you look in certain areas, different things happen. I haven't tried this one. I've tried all lens, but I haven't tried that exhibition partially. But it, I mean, ultimately, that could be a, a thing, really. E- either have a physical gallery that you do mixed reality or just be totally in the astral plane, just go like full VR. Or I don't know. I mean, both will just at the end, it's just a matter of transparency. So it will depend on the well, the, what's the intent of the person. But uh, I feel definitely having virtual gallery, either if it's mixed reality or AR or VR, it's going to be a thing. There's no way around it. I mean, if you've been to VR chat, you know how that thing is. It's kind of crazy. It just gives a, a glimpse of the tip of the iceberg of how that thing could emerge really and evolve. Yeah, well, that's awesome. So yeah, tell me, let's talk a well, let's just talk a little bit on the career side. You know, a lot of my students are looking at it and they're like, "We're just starting out. We're not quite on the whole artsy conversation, right?" You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. How, how do I just stop working at Costco? So, yeah. what is your advice to people like what they need to focus on to, to kind of create the you know the the capacity, the resources to get that first job? I guess there's nowhere around it. It's just practicing, putting the bar as high as you can. Really, it's just finding. The thing is that with school is that it's easy to actually be content by the fact that you're the better of your class. I feel like a lot of school actually have those micro bubble that people actually try to gauge their level based on the class and not with the internet. Or that's why it's always good to go online, look at the best of the best, or just trying to f- def- see what you define as the best and just aim towards that. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess the best is really just to go out and just embrace the the internet really Uh, because ultimately that thing is well you will get in your face if you stay in your bubble of class or a different region i mean i feel it's uh it's the best way really just go online and see what's uh what's out there you're a bit of a generalist i think you said as well right yeah i do a bit of everything i guess mostly sculpting but uh i was at frame store for uh three years which i was just texturing definitely all the asset creation process is certainly something i kind of prefer so look at texture modeling even exploration with new tools i'll always dig that so look at uh, what's out there and try not to be the best in your bubble but be work towards just being the best so hit art station right just try to make sure that you're working and you're focused on your quality what are some of the common mistakes that you see in artists work that i think kind of signal because one of the key things for me is just helping people understand that you know it's, it's you're always growing right but like, yeah. let's just, let's say if we're talking characters, what are some of the common mistakes that you see people make that are just tell you they're not quite there? They've got much more to go. I mean, hands. I'm really yeah finicky on hands. I mean, uh, I like good hands. I like seeing something that touched someone. Trying to explore your own stuff is always more interesting. I mean, we've seen a bunch of different creature of copies of someone else work and all that. I mean, that could be a good benchmark, but I feel like, yeah, having your own personal exploration of like you want to have a character uh, designing it or something is always a bit more interesting. Yeah, uh, certainly. I mean, I'm, I don't think I'm the good reference point in terms of even if I work in the industry, I'm still an outsider in it in some way. What do you mean? How do you say that? Well, I, I never thought about getting a job is the thing is I mm-hmm. just end up working but it's not like i never intended that i will do that to get a job or something i just was obsessed by doing shape and having wanting to express something or just explore inner stuff that i was attracted to and through that emerge and that unfold into anatomy into shape into bouncing form and space and and then you get into the that rabbit hole that you it's a lifetime you know it's a lifetime uh, journey and that, if you do it in an honest way and in like, just being humble about it, just go for it and just love what you do, but not in a context of even, I know at the end, you still have to get a job ultimately, but if you do it in an honest way, you just want to be better about expressing what you had in mind. I feel ultimately seeing someone passionate about something is always like any passionate person I met always have, have that aura or that vibration around them that make them like attract other people and that in some way that's how you, you get a job you just you you have i don't know being passionate about it's always a thing it's not being passionate for being passionate about it but just do it 
Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to put in word, really, because you don't have to hang about being passionate about something. It's just naturally that thing will emerge in that state of mind that someone could call passionate. But it's just mm-hmm. being uh, deeply obsessed by it in a super humble, natural and not making a separation between job and life and all that. I mean, ultimately, your mind and your creation and, well, everything is all mush, mush bit into one phenomenon that you call you, but not seeing it as separate bubbles like job and family and all that, but seeing it as a whole. It's mm-hmm. always a good thing to, it really gives personality, I feel, to the work. And ultimately, it's all... You cannot split like, oh, this is you as a job, you as a, as a, I don't know, a father or a husband or whatever. It's just one phenomenon, you know? And so uh, anyway, that's more my mindset around. I guess someone else could say the opposite, but uh, for, for me, at least that's more, uh, I mean, yeah, it's just different. As I said in the beginning, it's just different, different facet of a, the same geometry that you could, that you call yourself in, in reality, really. Yeah. This is a little, um, un, philosophical of a question but do you have like a favorite philosopher i have a few well the thing is that philosophy in university is really boring i feel like that's why i kind of dropped out about it i mean it's really focused into the study of philosophy rather than well philosophy is all about the present it's all about you in front of reality you know and there's a lot of focus in university about well studying other people's work which is cool but I'm more interested in the, well, the personal aspect of it. So who cares about someone else? You know, it's like ultimately you have to go through and you will find those person that because they had those same questions, those same problems, you know. But if I had to put one that is a bit more classical, I will say Alfred Nord Whitehead. But mm-hmm. I'm quite, quite fan of Terence McKenna and Krishnamurti, really. And Alan West is pretty cool. Spinoza is pretty cool, too. At the end, they all kind of say the same thing in a different language. Philosophy is just the, it's, that's the, the road until you, you see the limitation of language and then becomes mm. that, that state that is, you could call the mystical or the, the place that language cannot describe. And that's where actually that is more interesting. I mean, philosophy is just like the, the path towards that cliff that is, you cannot actually try to let's say um you cannot define in words really and that's where it's interesting to orbit around that's why i like yeah philosophy is one thing but it's more about theology or mysticism or shamanist aspect yeah. do you feel yeah. like that's where your art kind of picks up ultimately yeah i mean i'm still in the process of figuring out what digital creation means but mm-hmm. through that I, I still want to inject more into the into the I don't know. I don't like to say mystical because that implied non-mystical or the opposite. But uh, I'm definitely attracted towards those sphere of, uh, well, what is reality? You know, it's uh, what is life in general. I'm really into near-death experience in general. That's a theme that even if I don't try to really externalize it really in a cheesy way, I always try to bid around it. I mean, all the recollection of people having near-death experience is pretty, you know, it's a pretty interesting phenomenon of uh, of study for science in the, in the next few years, I guess. Yeah, you know, there's um there's two artists that kind of hit on that same type of thing: Odd Nerdrum and Bo Bartlett. Very what? Different. I don't know them. Really? Uh, yeah. You, you, can you? Yeah, here I'll, I'll throw Bo up, and then uh, Odd. Odd is somebody you definitely need to know. But here's some of Bo. Oh yeah. Yeah, and then uh, Odd Nerdrum. Oh, yeah, I know that guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Figured you would, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, both of them said oh, the, yeah, yeah. They, they, they both said the same thing, which is that, you know, the realism is, you know, like that's the easy part. And that's where it's like you're just making a la- – you're making same, something look like a label. But then the goal of art is to get past the label to that thing that has no language, has no words, really. That's right. That's that's how I feel about it. So how does that fit into our lives in CG for you? Um, <laughs> you know, because that's the crap, uh, right? I mean, I'm, still, I'm still in the process of trying to figure that out. <laughs> um, it's uh, well, it's a reality that you have to feed the tube that 
well, you have to put stuff in your mouth and have a roof on your over your head. So I guess you have to make some sacrifice to an extent. Yeah. But you still want to, I don't know, I'm still in the process of, of trying to figure that out. Yeah, but, you know, if we flip the script, like, you know, here's Bo and Bo, he, you know, he makes a living just making these paintings. But then yeah. a CG artists, our living is working for other people, not making yeah. our own paintings per se. So how do we flip that? You know, Odd Nerdrum, again, he has his own, like, institute. Yeah. Bo has his own uh, museum. For me, my guess is hopefully VR and hair art will bring a bit of that freshness and that independency that classical 2d artist 2d painter had for centuries is that mm. now it's cg is really something as a gimmick i feel like it's still perceived as a tool for creating well creating films and game but it's not something that as, well classical historic art will perceive as something mature as in the profession not professional but something that has the the, the same grandeur of any classical like Clay and digital are not perceived, or marble is not perceived the same way as digital, right? But I feel mm -hmm. like with AR and VR, will departure from the, the industry that made the tool and will departure from that and conquer that landscape of a bit more, I, hopefully, will, a bit more freedom and exploration and being a bit more independent for, for that. That's my hope about it. This, in some ways, that's always the, the end state that I put in my mind that ultimately that thing will unfold and well, I, I could do some transition phase. I'm kind of thinking about doing some 3D printing and stuff. But ultimately, mm -hmm. yeah, I feel like AR exhibition and just having space that you can gather different mind, different exhibition, different type of art, and just having discussion, some sort of podcast in VR and AR or something, and just have a bit like those cafe and, and friends back in the days that were just like hub pool of different mind just converging to share and to just get inspire each other and stuff. So I feel like, yeah, we'll get that in AR and VR. And that's why it's interesting to just, at least for me, that's, that's why I probably still do it is that I know that that thing will probably emerge towards something else, which is those, those me that medium really. But if the, the, if I knew that uh, CG was always going to be stick to games and film forever, I would probably have quit by now. Mm. I guess there's slide at the end of the tunnel because that, well, at least for me, that's how I perceive it. Uh, I hope I'm right. <laughs> I hope I'm right. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyway, everything seemed to say that it is. I mean, all those, everyone, it's kind of written the sky that AR has to be there. I mean, the desire to experience just the, the fantasy of the mind and the inner, the inner self to, and to externalize it in like, like an AR seem like it's, it's too big to actually contain or just to not to happen, you know? So mm -hmm. I guess we're be just in a good spot to just jump into the bag wagon of that new hype about AR. And from then we could, well, it's going to be probably a different market. So the thing is that CG is super, it's super cold and technical. I mean, you look at it, like you look at ZBrush or, or Maya, it's super, there's a lot of button. It's yeah. Not natural. We you use a, a like a Wacom tablet far away to push a mouse on a 2D screen. It's super abstract and it's kind of cold by itself. You kind of attract a lot of coldness, you know. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's why probably in 2D and, and in clay and more traditional, you get a bit more uh, warmness because the medium itself is a bit more attract. It's attracting a bit more of that uh, soul soul aspect of human like quality or something. So I feel like VR, it's it's kind of getting closer to that do you have a sense of when the next uh gallery show is going to be yeah i mean it was kind of up to me actually to kind of set it up yeah i just moved back from from what uh just having like find your apartment and all that but we had in mind probably next few months ultimately the best one would be every two months we have a proper exhibition all that and, and my, my like the, the exhibition i did is still open like for people to go in on my Oculus channel, so they can go in my room and still see it, see it. But uh, ultimately, the best would be to have like every two months or months a different type of artists um, just ex ex exposing their work. That could be interesting. That's, that's certainly. Awesome. All right, man. Well, that is fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us today and for kind of sharing this. It's really just wonderful to talk to you. This your work has got such a beautiful quality to it, and I love how it's not just 
CG. It's not, you know, there's always a message coming across in this. So powerful. I try. I mean, I don't know. I'm just trying to trying to do that as as in an honest way as possible. But um, yeah, I'm just the process of trying to figure it out. Cool. What's that in, that mean, yeah. Any resources you recommend for people wanting to get into Medium? Asking for a friend. <laughs> um, I can bug Geo, yeah, but I can only bug Geo so much. I actually did the template to actually start a forum with cg sculpting for vr i mean there's none really there's a yeah. facebook groups but there's literally no there's no forum for people just to share tips and all that i mean yeah they have that artist council facebook group but um, yeah yeah i'm on it but it's super private and it's like for someone else just someone to just start and want to get in, into the, the bang wagon of it just there's like that yeah you, you can type on facebook there's one group that there's a open to the public people can go into but uh, ultimately, I would love to actually create a farm, just start, yeah, just start sharing tips. And, Sharon. Yeah, that would All be right. cool. Well, I'll look for that uh, then. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. Awesome talking oh, to yeah. you. Awesome. Yeah, thanks everybody for joining me. And Sam, thanks again, man, so much for, for spending the time. No worries, man. Awesome. All Have right, good take day. care. You too. See thanks. You. Cheers. Bye-bye. All right. So I want to thank you so much for being here, for taking the time and for listening to this podcast. And I want to ask a couple of things from you. Number one, make sure you leave a comment or you rate this on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever it is that you're getting this. That's going to make a big difference in helping us get the word out and get people to know who we are. All right. The other thing is I want to make sure you know where to find us. So you can head over to www.gameartinstitute.com where you can learn about our flagship program, which is the Game Artist Boot Camp. This, this is designed for those who are really looking to move the needle on their career and really lock in that job. You may have gone to school and learned a bunch, maybe haven't learned a bunch, But at the Game Art Institute, the primary focus we have is the very specific industry skills, the triggers that you really need to hit in that job interview. What are the specific things that they're looking for? That's what we're going to be training you on. We're taking applications right now for environment artists and for character artists. So make sure you head over to www.gameartinstitute.com and apply today. That way we can have that conversation, make sure this is a fit for you, make sure that you're a fit for it. And if everything is perfect, then we will sign you up for that right away and get you into your training and start moving the needle on your career. All right, thank you so much again for being here. Take care, have an amazing day.